Good day, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well and hope everybody's creating and having fun with resin and acrylic pouring. And I am having fun testing or trying out rather some new resin products. So yesterday I was working on Aldex Crystal Past and today I am going to try the amazing clear cast Illumilite. Okay, so you get a, I've got a little booklet that came with it. The instructions, it's in a couple of languages. Ratio one to one by volume. So I've got my scale here. I like it um, measure, measured by volume because you can do it in one cup without a problem. Equal amounts, A and B by volume. Pour together, okay, we know all that. Casting instructions. And then I got all these advanced tips. I have to read through that and see if there's something that I don't know that I can learn from it. Um, but this, uh, this one can be used for all kinds of things. And uh, for jewelry making, with, um, some key rings. Interesting. Okay, so uh, I will just test on this tiny little piece, which is uh, just a, a little coaster. I have taped the back of it, and um, I'm estimating I'm only going to need about oh, 20 milliliters for that one. So it's going to be um, one to one, so 10 10. Nope, I can get this thing to work. Small amount I'm used to pouring in a big cup. Oh, this is really cool because it comes with a nice sealed lid. So usually these ones I can't get to pop out, so I'll just cut them like that. Just go all the way around. And get rid of it. Oop. Now, pop it off, pop the whole thing off, and then my little wipe. I run out of alcohol wipes, so that's that one. Now I'm going to clean my knife because I don't want any, um, any of that part, what is it, B, to mess up my part A, even though it's just a lid, but still, got to be careful. I'm all really educated on cross-contamination. When I worked in aged care, I had to be very, very careful. So it's good to just beware of that. Okay. So part A, part B is going to be exactly the same. Now, I'm going to switch this thing off. Yesterday, it turned off on me. So... I'll put new batteries in there. Come on. And then I'm going to just go for it. 10 mils of this one. Why aren't you moving? Oh boy. I love it when I get a challenge like this. So I have no idea now how many mils that is because the, the blooming thing is not working. Why? Oh my goodness. Okay, I shall fix that. Oh, 9 grams, 10 grams. Here we go. When I take it over, it's 10 grams. Okay, so there must be 10 grams. That makes sense, actually. you got to be prepared for these things. Or maybe get another scale. Okay, so it's minus 10 grams. So that was 10 grams, obviously. I'll switch it off again. Switch it back on. 
zero and then nine grams but there's a okay so how much does a cup weigh give me a second sometimes things just want to bugger you up okay let's see that's three grams okay so let's go now so i need 13 grams in here Twelve, one more. It'd be really hard to measure this small amount. There we go, I've got thirteen grams there. Okay. And now I need to add ten grams because well, it's fourteen, so ten and a bit. Make it thirteen. Back to thirteen. So let's go. Another 10, which will make a 23. 22. 3. Okay. Got it. So the reason, it's only 20 grams in there. But um, the reason why it's 23, obviously because 3 grams for the cup. So I'll get rid of that now, switch it off. And I think I'm due to get a nice little new scale for these kinds of things. So now stirring. Let's see how it goes. It feels pretty thick at the moment. So when I am testing a uh, new resin, obviously I I do it uh, in view of uh, using that product because they are all different. They're different in um, what they're used for. Some of them are perfect for jewelry. Some of them set very fast. Some of them take longer to set so you can work you've got a, a longer working time with them some of them are thinner some are thicker some are used for tabletops they're really durable um, countertops surfboards there's all kinds of different ones but resin is resin and resin can be used any resin can be used in art but it's good to to know what you're working with so that you can produce a really good outcome by knowing um, what you're working with. So when I want to try a new product, I always get a smaller amount of it, just like a sample. If you can get a sample pack, that's even better. And I um, start on a small piece just to um, see what it does I torch it a lot to see how far I can push with the heat and what it does and I look for any kind of changes in resin I look for how each pigment reacts with resin um, <clears throat> And then you know that you can use certain pigments with certain resins and you can't use um, some you know the ones that don't work so this one I believe says that it's given me 30 minutes working time yeah no, I can't see it here 30 to 40 minutes okay and I'm stirring to until I don't have any more strings in there. No strings attached. We don't want any strings. And I can't see any. There's tiny little um, micro bubbles, which is absolutely normal. 
so and the bigger bubbles are coming up and popping which is great okay so I've got that there it's probably even going to be too much for my why is that bumpy there just put it here it would be good to have it leveled well, it's not too bad okay, it's only a, a play one okay so I better get a couple of smaller cups if I what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab um, these cups and cut them because I can get a better you can cut look this is what I do real quick and easy I'm actually not timing myself and I don't know what time it is let me just quickly have a look 11:40. so how long has it been about a couple of minutes so let's say 11:40. so this is what I do I'm just going to cut it straight through here watch fingers inside and then I just pull it just follow that line some cups are a little bit harder to cut so you can use scissors but this one works really well for me and there you have three little cups which are pretty flexible for, great for pouring and but I want to see what's going on inside there that's why I'm doing it this way so um, let's just pour some of this in there, tiny little bit there, a little bit there, and a bit here, and always leave some for Ron, okay? Leave some for later on, because you never know when you're going to need it, and then you won't have any to mix. Grab my sticks, and I've got some of this beautiful Royal Blue by Barnes and it's uh, alcohol ink so I'm just going to put this one I believe it's pretty transparent I've got four cups in there four cups four drops give it a stir so I'm watching now if there's any change in this resin and there's no change okay so that's pretty cool and I'm not going to mix it all the way through I'm going to leave some some streaks through that and then I'm going to use a little bit of this white by Artisu it's an epoxy pigment I only need a tiny little bit that's pretty much all I'm going to use in there put it in here I'm going to stir this in well. These are epoxy pigments, so you know that they will <clears throat> they will work well with resin because they are made for resin specifically. So you know that you're not going to have trouble with them as long as you're not putting a ton in there. So about ten percent. This was actually more than ten percent. Um. I've tested that one before so I know that these epoxy pigments you can put extra in there if you want a stronger colour and I just want a tiny a little bit of actually I'm going to go grab a different colour my aquamarine just because I like it a lot and once again dip it in there don't need a lot this is quite transparent it looks dark it looks almost black until you start stirring and then you get this it still looks pretty dark but that's only a tiny little amount of uh, resin in there maybe five milliliters so it, it is quite a bit okay might go with the blue first let's start to the top here You can do a dirty pour, you don't have to. So many things you can do. And then I'm just going to swirl that around to see how it flows. I don't have any gesso on this, I haven't primed it. I'm just using it as is. It's looking super, super crystally. No bubbles, can't see any bubbles on there which is really really cool because they can be quite a pain but of course because I haven't primed it 
you can see that it's it's uh, it's really been soaked into the MDF. A little bit more of this, just going to go over there. I know you can't see that from up there, but once I get my white in there, then you'll you'll be able to to see what's going on or the different um, layers that add dimension. Then I go through it like so. And I still can't see any bubbles in here. And this is likely because it does have a lot of pictures of jewelry on the box so it's likely uh, formulated for jewelry so you don't you can't really torch it you have to heat I guess um, to get rid of bubbles you would have to heat the, the resin to get it you know to get the um, the bubbles to surface up I'm gonna get some more of this beautiful blue. But um, this is super cool. No bubble. I can see a couple, but that's because I'm fiddling. I'm using the same stick, doesn't really worry me at the moment because these colors are gonna get mixed in. And then you want to put another one in there. When I put my white in there, it's going to look, it's going to break it up and make it look great. Just pulling this, this over here a little bit. So it's moving nicely. You can see that already. I'm going to give it a little torch uh, with my small torch. Um, which is here. Okay. Okay, here comes the white. And then we're going to hit it with a bit of heat. I'm going to go with my um, heat gun from up high to start with and on the low okay so you can see the separation it's just really cool. Oh, that's super, super smooth. That is super smooth. I really like that. I'm going to add a little bit more white in there. Let's go this way now. And I might just use this stick to just pull it a bit. And he did it again. So that's now I'm gonna just gonna go around around here and just pick up these little bits that are falling. So guys, if you're doing jewelry, um you wouldn't be using a lot and this um, this will last you quite a long time but it's um, it's perfect for that there's no bubbles it's super super smooth and uh, it's just lovely what I'm doing now is I'm just pulling that down this is just the, the fiddly part so 
I'm guessing like if you want to get a cheaper brand um, you you just need to do extra work you know to get rid of those bubbles and uh, and I've been doing it for months I've you know I've used cheaper brands because you know if I couldn't afford to get something else I will just get a cheaper brand and um, and uh, go with that just means that I have a lot more work to do You've just got to sit and babysit it and uh, get it to you know, all the bubbles to to release but this like there's no bubbles there nothing it's smooth and it's just so wonderful I like that as is I'm just gonna leave it like that I've got some really nice cells opening up here but that's just uh, the pigments um, so yeah I'm gonna leave that as is and I've got a little bit left here I might just grab another one of them try not to make a mess and do something else Okay, so I had to quickly go and tape another one of these um, coasters. So what I'm doing is I'm just going around and pressing. Sorry, I keep doing this. So it, it stays there. Ooh, try not to knock this one over. I'm going to move it there. I am very, very sticky. Right, so same deal. I've got some of this one left so what I might do is just mix in some more of that blue so I'm noticing that this is starting to harden now and um, so it is definitely uh, quicker to harden or to set rather and uh, some of them are quicker, some of them are slower. The one that I've been using recently, um, I could stretch out an hour, get an hour out of it easy. But that one uh, needs it because I, I needed to, you know, really babysit it and torch it every, every so often to get the bubbles out that kept forming um, okay all right so in with the same deal that's quite pretty as is so I'm just gonna pour that in here it's a really pretty color this uh, royal blue in you go the whole lot now and I'm being a little bit rougher with it now just to see what happens if I create some bubbles by just doing this and see if they will pop up and see what they do and then I'm gonna get some of this aquamarine straight in there so you can see that it's not as uh, as flowy as as it is when you first start and it's quite a warm day today and I don't have my air conditioner on I can feel it warming up in here so that will help with the setting and I'm just going to bring this a little bit closer to here so I'm just going to spread it And yep, you can, I don't know if you can see, but it is dragging now, so it is definitely setting. Which is cool, still have time. This is a good uh, test as well to see how it will work when I start torching it and start um, fiddling and how long I can do it for. Just getting rid of the initial um, bumps. 
and now in with a white just going to go in like so and up here like I did before there will be probably be more more white now because I want to use it all up can do all kinds of things you don't have to create um, effects with the with the heat but I like to okay here comes the heat gun I'm gonna stand up for that one bring that down a bit there we go lovely now I can do it Oh, that's looking really funky. That's looking pretty. I like it. Now I feel like I want to put some more white on this one. Let's see if we can do that. I've got a tiny little bit left. Let's see if I can push it um, a little bit further with the heat. Because I tend to do that. I tend to... Wow, that's really awesome. Okay. Getting excited here. So you can see this one, I'll bring it a little bit that way. And I'm gonna go with a little bit more white. Just wanna feel it first. Yep, it's pretty fluid. There's not a lot of this white left, but I would like to give it a bit more, more scrape up as much as I can in there. Not, not a lot. And it's turned very greenish. Okay, that's what we've got. Now we're going to hit it with a little bit of actually. What I'm going to do is do this. And then go with the heat. been asked a question about um, scorching and resin and if you have been following my videos you'll notice that I use a lot of heat on my resin and um, that is because I know when to stop I know when to pull back you know you, you do it you're gonna do a hard one like I did here pull back let it relax because if you keep that heat in resin resin will heat up very very fast and it'll burn it'll scorch so there you have it I'm gonna leave it there's no absolutely no bubbles no and I don't want to torch it too much because I don't want to move it okay so we'll leave it at that I'm gonna bring you down closer when it's all set up so you can see um, what, what they look like so I hope this helped you um with your testing and trying out new resin or new products um, so let me know what you think and uh, have a go try it don't be afraid use small amounts and work on small things first and um, just have a go it's just wonderful thanks so much